Good morning. Good morning and good morning. Wow, it's lovely to see some, some folk we haven't seen for a while. It's lovely to see you all. And a very warm welcome to, to everybody who's here to celebrate Thanksgiving Day with us. It's great to see folk um, in the corridor as well, uh, dancing away. We saw you. <laughs> the folk, this is our annual Thanksgiving Day, and uh, it thrills us when so many folk come out to join us. Um, and as we've been preparing for this day, uh, we thought that just have this feeling that um, this Thanksgiving Day is more than just about saying thank you, which is what we've come to do. We've come to say thank you. But it's about making an offering, an offering of our Thanksgiving, making an offering of ourselves, making an offering of who we are, our hearts, our spirits, our bodies. And uh, so as we gather this morning, we, we want to encourage you to, to bring yourselves as an offering. The, the woman who anointed Jesus' feet with her hair and with the most expensive oil comes to mind. A beautiful act. And we want to, we want to respond, respond to God's goodness by giving him ourselves. To say thank you. So welcome. going to put some words on the screen and we are going to pray this prayer together, please. Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadows of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, light of the world. Amen. Amen. As I was preparing a few moments ago, the Lord reminded me of the, the festival shout, the festal shout. In Hebrew, the word is teruah. Um, and it says in Psalm 89, blessed are those who know how to make the festal shout. You know what's coming, don't you? <laughs> so the words, <laughs> the, the words that are going to be on the screen, I will, I will lead them. But, but folks, let's, let's respond with a festal shout, a festival shout. Let's acknowledge who we are here to worship. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Forever three in one. Be glorified at home. Be glorified in church. Be glorified on earth. Be glorified in heaven. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Forever. Three in one. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that's a festal shout. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We gather to worship God. And it is appropriate to join the angels who day and night sing only one song. Holy, holy, holy. Let's stand. Thank you.
nations are gathered around that throne, the throne of grace, the throne of mercy. We repeat with the angels that song, that everlasting song, holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Amen. Please sit, folk. We come into the presence of our holy God, and uh, it is he and he alone, Jehovah Mkadesh, the one who makes us holy. We cannot make ourselves holy. It is him who puts his hand on us. It is him who stretches his hand of mercy and grace to make us holy. So we're going to pray a prayer of confession together as we continue in our worship. And uh, just invite God the Holy Spirit to help us to do this. Lord, help us to keep short accounts with you. The Father is always present. Forgive us for not reflecting your faithfulness. The Son is always self-giving. Forgive us for living for ourselves. The Spirit always leads us on. Forgive us for holding back. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming, but assured, not trusting ourselves, but your word. We hunger and thirst for righteousness. We ask for our hearts to be satisfied with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. We stand between two great miracles, those of us who follow Jesus, the miracle of rebirth and the miracle of eternal life. Do you know those miracles? Who enjoys the miracle of rebirth? Yeah, we all enjoy the miracle of rebirth. Those who have come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those of us joining us online, who've come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and who seeks us out because he loves us. We stand between that miracle the miracle of rebirth, and the miracle of eternal life. Isn't that lovely? So we're going to sing and give thanks for the rebirth we have experienced. We are new creations. We're no longer the old. We are new, made new by Jesus Christ and his dying for us, that we may be forgiven for our sin. So let's stand and sing, I'm a new creation.
turn to somebody and say, I am a new creation. 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 You can sit down now. Behave. <laughs> Folk, we shouldn't underestimate the fact that we are new creations. It's the thing that separates us from the rest of the world. It is the thing that separates us from the rest of the world. We have been rebirthed, those of us who know Jesus. We shouldn't, we shouldn't underestimate it. It's such a wonderful gift. We should tell people on the streets, in the avenues, <laughs> I'm a new creation. The... <laughs> yes. It's our annual Thanksgiving service, and we bring ourselves, our hearts, our spirits, our bodies as an offering to the Lord to give thanks to Him. I have, in the last couple of weeks, had um, the the opportunity of reading um, our chairman of trustees' um, uh, report as he's preparing that for the for the AGM notes, and it's three pages of everything we have done in the last the last year. I w I was. I was gasping at the end. I've just, did we really do all of that? And then I had the opportunity of, of watching the recording we're about to share again, just to put some pictures on some of the things that we have done. And I have to be honest, at the end of the recording, I was in tears. And I just, Lord, really? You've made it possible for us to do all those things in one year. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So enjoy this video clip. Welcome here to Chapez Garden, where Steve said we're here to dedicate this wonderful uh, poly polytunnel in, uh, specifically.
Still brings tears to my eyes watching that and just um, seeing some of the many things. And I could speak to every one of those pictures and to every one of those things. And uh, the one I'm prompted to to speak about is Ashley, um, one of the um, young guys who works in our gardens. He comes from a school um, where people are, are being um, taught and prepared to be able to go into the world and work. And but they need to go somewhere to learn some skills first. And we, for the last couple of years, have been um, walking with some of these students. And Ashley is graduating on Tuesday. And he spent a year here. Under Trevor's guidance, which um, we're just so grateful for, that there are people who, who have the opportunities to be able to find healing in ways that, um, that are so much more. Just, uh, it is fantastic to be a part of all that God does here. It is just really, really wonderful. And I could sing, I could sing of God's love forever. Let's do that.
Jesus, it's not about us. It's all about you. Let's uh, remain standing and sing, Jesus, lover of my soul. It's all about you. Jesus, we could sing of your love forever. And we want to declare right here, right now, Lord, that it is all about you. It's not about us. It's not about Crowhurst Christian Healing Center and what we might be able to do. It's about you, Jesus Christ, and what you do here. And so we thank you and we praise you and we bless you, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that, that you would speak to each of us now from your word. Speak to us, Holy Spirit of God in the way that you love to do, at work inside every single one of us, bringing about the work of Father God, preparing us to be the beautiful bride for the great feast and life everlasting. Continue that work, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please sit. Once upon a time, 
there was a rich businessman who was very close to death. Having worked hard all his life, he desperately wanted to take some of his wealth with him to heaven. And uh, he was eventually, extraordinarily, given special dispensation by God to bring to heaven one suitcase. Overjoyed, the businessman dug out his largest suitcase, filled it with gold bars, and put it next to his bed. Soon afterwards, as was expected, the man died and found himself at the pearly gates, where he was greeted by St. Peter. And Peter said, what's that? You're not allowed to bring anything in here. And the businessman said, but I have special dispensation. God said that I can bring one suitcase in with me. So St. Peter being the good man he is thought, I better go and check this out with, with the authorities. And came back and said, you're right. You are allowed to bring in one suitcase, but before you do, I need to look into your suitcase and see what it is you've brought. So he opened the suitcase to see what the businessman had found so precious that he would not want to leave it behind. And he looked in the suitcase and he looked at the man and he said, you brought paving stones. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll receive that. Thank you. We're not taking any of it with us, folk. Today our theme is celebrating decluttering, and uh, which we've been on a bit of an interesting journey, and I just want to tell three brief stories. Um, we uh, get to pray with our trustees. We have such a, a wonderful relationship with our trustees. We get to pray with our trustees twice a year, and, um, and we meet with them, and we enjoy a good day of fellowship, a good day of seeking the Lord's face. And on the agenda in our April prayer day um, was sacred space. Um, and I went to that meeting very excited, um, wondering what the Lord was going to reveal to us. And I had visions of huge, big mansions that the Lord was going to have us build um, for sacred space. And extraordinarily, by the end of the day, the Lord said, but you've got space here. Why don't you just declutter it? And we had a quick look around. And we found two rooms that were full of clutter and have been full of clutter for three years since COVID. They'd become storage rooms. And um, we, we set about going to work straight away. And I sent, a, I'll never forget, I sent an email out to the staff. And I just said, and I titled it, Permission to Skip. They get rid of it all. Just get rid of it all. And... Um, a member of staff came to me and, uh, and said, but maybe some of the stuff that we want to skip, people may want. And I said, hey? And they said, we could donate it. And I said, really? And we could sell it. I like that idea. <laughs> so the member of staff said, could I have a go? And blow me down for the next two weeks. We didn't have people who I'd never seen before in my life walking in through the door empty-handed and leaving with boxes of stuff, which I had just said, put it in the trash can. And we learned something about decluttering there, folk. We can donate some of our clutter because there are people who don't have what we have. We can sell some of our clutter and we can get the rewards and give to people those things that they want or we can trash some of our clutter and this afternoon we'll have the opportunity of rededicating some of the rooms that have not been used and now they have become god's space they've become sacred space again and i'm, I'm excited about that uh, a second thing was my office 
can sometimes be quite disorganized. That's why nobody is allowed to come in there, <laughs> because it just looks like clutter. Um, but I have another wonderful member of staff who, when she sticks her head in her, my door every now and again, she says, how are things going? And I just opened my drawer on one occasion and she said, what's going on in there? Um, so I said, well, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? And this was since um, uh, the idea of decluttering came to mind. And she said, what do you need in there? And I said, there's probably about three things in that drawer of which there were over a hundred things. And she set about sorting out my drawer. She set about sorting out my filing. She, she knows an extraordinary thing, the alphabet. <laughs> that was new to me. <laughs> and now my filing system is in alphabetical order and very ordered, and it's extraordinary. And my bookshelves, which you couldn't see what was going on on my bookshelves. You could go into my bookshelf now and know exactly which section was belonged to which. And there are spaces on my bookshelves because I did some decluttering. And then in May, a couple of days before Pentecost Sunday, I was, um, I was with my spiritual director, um, another amazing person. And uh, I was telling her these stories, you know how it is. <laughs> We're doing a great job decluttering, you know. And she said, sometimes we need to declutter ourselves. And the next day, the day before Pentecost Sunday, I prayed a four word prayer. Be careful what you ask for. I said, Holy Spirit, Declutter me. And for the weeks that have followed, I, I could run a weekend talking about the experience. But in the, the few days after that, the Lord brought to mind something, an area of my life that was cluttered and needed attention. Um, and I didn't see it at the time, but I remember being quite put out. And, and a few days after that, the Lord said, well, you asked me to declutter you, didn't you? And I had to set about doing some work in that area of my life. And the extraordinary thing was that I began to feel the freedom and the space that comes from decluttering. And in fact, I felt so spaced out, I felt this was odd. <laughs> and I started to, to put some things into that space, which until another wise person who I get to spend a lot of time with said to me, what are you filling the space that has been created by decluttering? And it wasn't of God. And I had to do some more repenting and some more confessing. And I come to you today in this extraordinary place where I've learned the value of decluttering. And we want to celebrate it today. So when we were preparing for Thanksgiving Day and, and I was asked, so what's the theme for Thanksgiving Day? I said, celebrating decluttering <laughs> and people looked at me like really <laughs> it's thanksgiving day after all um, and i said yes it's celebrating decluttering and uh, told a member of member of our team that we were going to be celebrating decluttering on thanksgiving day and uh, the member of the team said did you know that decluttering Decluttering is the antidote to scurry funging. What? Scurry funge is that thing we all do when we see the neighbor approaching our door who might come in and we quickly run around and make everything look good. <laughs> do you know that? <laughs> yeah, well, yes. That's called scurry funging. But if we decluttered more, we would need to scurry funge less, wouldn't we? And then I had to find a Bible verse. The Lord took me to a Bible verse we all know so, so well. What do we yoke ourselves with, folk? What is the clutter we put on ourselves? And we're invited by the Lord Jesus to come to me. Take off the yoke that is not of you. 
and take on my yoke, which is such a beautiful invitation. And I thought I better be wise. Maybe I should look at the context of that. I've never looked at the context of it before. So Matthew chapter 11. And following. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I thought, hang on a moment. I recognize those verses as coming from somewhere else. And if you go to Luke chapter 10, the exact verses that Matthew uses can be found there. Are they on the screen? At that time, it's the exact verses, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father. You can read it as you like. The exact same verses. And I thought, this is really interesting, Lord. And thank you that it's about praise, because I'm going to be using this on Thanksgiving Day, and it would be really great to throw some praise in there. And here we see Jesus in praise, it's the only occasion in the whole of the Gospels that we see Jesus full of joy by the Holy Spirit, bursting with extravagant joy because of what God has done. And both of those verses begin with the words, at that time. At what time? What was going on? So I looked a little bit further. What was going on? Miracles. It was in a season of miracles. And I thought, that's great. It's Thanksgiving Day. We want to celebrate miracles. And for those who have ears to hear, I learned a very valuable lesson. The Luke version speaks about the disciples who came back and they were celebrating the miracles that the Lord had done in, through their hand. They had healed. They had seen folk released from darkness. And they came back celebrating this. And the Lord, full of joy, celebrated with them. And do you remember what he said? He said, but don't celebrate these things. Celebrate that your name is written in the book. Celebrate your relationship with Father. Because that is of primary importance. And when you look at the Matthew version. It too is in the context of miracles. But the miracles there are extraordinary because we find just a few verses before that Jesus is denouncing three villages where he says more miracles happened in your villages than anywhere else. And what happened? They did not believe him. They did not follow him. They did not repent. And it's almost as if Jesus comes to Father and says, what's going on? Why did these villagers not receive me? And Jesus has this revelation. And he says, because this is the Father's will. God's ways are not our ways. God's ways are not our ways. Jesus comes to that place where he knows the most important thing of primary importance is relationship. Not the miracle. Hey, and we long for miracles. We pray for miracles. In fact, we don't believe in miracles. We depend on miracles. Jesus, having just praised the Spirit, praised Father, says three things. Come to me. Walk with me. Learn from me. And you will find 
rest for your souls. Folk, that is of primary importance. And that is the work we are in, and that's why we're celebrating decluttering. Because folk come here and they, they have spring-cleaned minds when they go, spring-cleaned hearts. And we're reminded, and I'm loving the idea, that we are modeling something of decluttering. Because one day, when we get to those pearly gates, we won't have a suitcase with us, will we? Is the Spirit saying something to you today about things in your home, about things in your desk, maybe things in your heart, in your spirit? We celebrate the work of God here, friends. Because God is gentle and he is kind, as Jesus said. And he will not lay any burden on us. On the contrary, he will free us. He will free us into the, the goodness of everything that is available to us. And we celebrate that. We celebrate it with you. Thank you for sharing the journey with us the way you do. Amen. We're going to sing again. I want to be out of my depth in your love. I want to be out of my depth in your love. There's one line in the song which is just so, so meaningful for those of us who have things that need to be let go. Give me the strength, Lord, to help me let go of the things that need to be let go today so that I may celebrate in fullness and freedom all that is mine.
Hello, everyone. One of the things that... Um, am I on? Am I on? Good. One of the things that we love to do on Thanksgiving Day is to anoint our team. Thank you, Yvonne. So if you are a volunteer, a volunteer chaplain, somebody who's here regularly, trustee, paid member of staff, I'm going to invite you to... Um, you might need to watch your toes um, to come and surround the altar. Um, you'll be fine at the back there, but um, some of them may need to come inside. So if you work for us in some capacity, volunteer or paid, then um, please would you gather trustees as well. And um, while we wait for the hordes to descend, we are going to sing Father of Creation unfold your sovereign plan let your glory fall in this place Thank you. 
Thank you. We're going to, well, is it? I'm going to check the script. <laughs> Folk, we, we come bringing ourselves, and it's just such a wonderful thing to be able to do. Um, and uh, one of the things I love about Thanksgiving Day is we, we get to see all our supporters and uh, we are supported in so many different ways. It's great to have a team of people around doing the things we do. Um, but without you guys, where would we be? 
Um, and uh, we are blessed so often in so many different ways by the folk who visit here, by the folk who, who come here and, um, and worship with us and seek the Lord's face. And we seek the Lord's face together. We're all on the same journey together. The, if, if it were not for the support of the people that gather around us, we would not be able to do the work we do. Yes. Um, and there have been a couple of occasions um, in the last few years where, where it has almost become impossible for us to carry on if it were not for the financial support that we're given by folk. And it's just such a beautiful thing um, to be able to see God at work um, in the way that he does. So we're, we're going to sing, um, Father, I place into your hands um, the things that I have, the things that I, the things that I bring, and we're going to take up an offering um, while we do that. Um, so thank you. You can remain seated as we song, sing, as we song this thing. <laughs> Father, I place into your hands. Thank you. I think we can carry on singing. There's more and more just coming, more and more just coming piling in. <laughs> so, so, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Father, we trust you. Father, we, we only trust you. And we thank you for the way, for the miracles that we have seen, for the miracles of the stories we have heard. Uh, for the history of 96 years of the way that you have not only maintained, but have grown this ministry the way that you have. And Father, we, we only bring um, what we have and acknowledge that it's yours. It's all from you, Lord. So we thank you that we can bring an offering of ourselves, our hearts, our souls, our bodies. And we thank you for the offering that has been received here today. And we ask, Lord, that you would take it and multiply it. One hundred, one thousand, one million, hundred million, trillion million times for the glory of your name, Lord, for the glory of your name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, let's remain in an attitude of prayer. I was going to invite you, if you the as I look around this room, I know that there are there's a hundred plus stories of people who have met with the Lord here and been blessed and touched and healed and restored and renewed. Um and been given exciting words like, go play. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So if you want to call out a word, a word of praise, just a one line, a one line of praise, uh, please feel free to, to do so. A word of praise and thanksgiving to this great God. Just a one liner, please. Thank you. Thank you for giving me back my soul back. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for setting me. Lord, it's one year ago today. It's one year ago today I stood here in my testimony here in this very group. And since that day, you haven't stopped working on my life. And I praise you, I thank you for walking with me every single day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you have provided for us. We give you thanks, we give you praise. Because you know our needs better than we know our needs. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your your promises. And you assure us that you will never leave us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for your faithful love. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that you're your key light. Thank you for your provision for this place. And Lord, may you go on blessing it for many, many generations. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that your house is a house of pride. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that your healing touch and God lost its ancient time. Still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, mm -hmm. This place. Amen. 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 Thank you, God, for your holy fellowship. Jesus, your word says that you gave your only son, not for us. 
but for the whole world to believe in you. And we thank you for that. We thank you for Jesus and now. Amen. Yes, Father, thank you for Jesus. Without Jesus, we could not be reconciled to you. We could not know you. We could not be reborn. We could not know eternal life. These gifts that you have given to us and so much more. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the Lord's table and you are invited, not because I invite you, but because the Lord invites you. You are welcome to share at this table. We are going to sing about this feast. Here is bread. Here is wine. Here is grace. Here is peace. Here we are in unity together around this table. So let's sing. Thank you, Lord, that you are here, that you are with us, that your presence is with us. We're going to share in some words together. The words will be on the screen. So please respond. Is the Father with us? Yes. Oh, sorry. Next. <laughs> That's the one. Is the Father with us? He is. Is Christ among us? He is. Is, is the Spirit here? He is. is. This is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. Are redeemed. 
So let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, in these last days, you have sent your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit filling us with light and life. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die upon the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded, through the gifts of your creation. For on the same night he was betrayed, he took bread. And he gave thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given to you. After supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks and gave it to them saying, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one bread. Let us draw near with faith. Christ is the host and we are his guests. In order to make this as simple as possible, please listen to what I'm going to say next. If you need gluten-free bread, that will be in here. So if you're sitting in the little chapel and you need gluten-free, please come down here because this is where it will be. So all the bread in, in here will be gluten-free. There are going to be two stations here, one at the back door and one that will be start in the little chapel and come down the corridor. So if you are in the kind of the front quarter of the chapel here, please come to this rail and follow the lead of the person that will be in that area, kind of just keeping check. If you're in the back quarter of the chapel, please go to the back door. If you're in the front quarter here, please come forwards here. If you are in the back quarter there, please just wait. You will either be served by someone here or by the, the people that are coming down from the chapel. Follow the lead of the person that will be giving some directions. Does that make sense? Lovely. Okay. Could you just run it by it one more time? <laughs> There's always one. Two.
generous with the be generous with the bread be generous with the bread um We're very happy if you stand to receive, folk. Thank you.
So shall we pray together? The words will be on the screen. O oh God of our ancestors, God of our people, before whose face the human generations pass away, we thank you that in you we are kept safe forever and that the broken fragments of our history are gathered up in the redeeming act of your dear Son, remembered in this holy sacrament of bread and wine. Help us to walk daily in the communion of saints, declaring our faith in the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body. Amen. We often refer to sharing communion as a healing thing, where we can receive God's healing. And so I'm going to specifically pray for healing for you using our CCHC prayer of healing. So if there is something that you would like to um, hold before the Lord where you need an intervention or a decluttering or a healing in your life, then hold it out to him as I pray. Abba, Father, we come to you acknowledging our brokenness and our woundedness and our need of you. And as we stand here, Lord, we acknowledge the brokenness and the neediness of the world. We come to you as your beloved ones. We come to you knowing that we are welcomed into your embrace. Jehovah Rapha, you are the Lord, our healer. We need your healing, body, mind and spirit. Jehovah Makedesh, the one who makes us holy. Lord, we need your cleansing and your restoring. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Lord, we need your peace. Our world needs your peace our churches and our communities need your peace. El Olam, you are the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. Unchanging, constant, reliable. Thank you that we have, and Lord, gosh, we need your unchanging, constant, reliable presence in our lives. Thank you that we have it. We need more of it, Lord. El Elyon, you are God most high. And Lord, we declare today that you are sovereign in this place. We invite you to be sovereign. And Lord, we need your sovereignty. We come in worship, Lord. We come in humility. Knowing that you desire intimacy, relationship with us above everything else. Would you draw us into that deeper place with you? Amen. Amen.
Father, we have gathered and we have been loved and we have loved. We have offered ourselves, our hearts, our souls, our bodies as a thanksgiving to you. And we hear your call, Lord, repeated through history, through time, through the centuries. Come, follow me. So, Lord, we hear your call and we respond by the help of the Holy Spirit in every way we can for the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Folks, stand with me if you're able, and we're going to sing our final hymn. Hear the call of the kingdom. We will answer that call. We will follow bringing hope to the world. Let's sing. Thank you. Please remain standing for a moment, folk, for the blessing. The words of the blessing are going to be on the screen, and you're going to see this is one final opportunity for us to get rid of a few things, to do some decluttering. We can declutter our problems, our difficulties, the devil's works. And, um, and I'm going to add to that all our clutter. Um, and so, folk, when I say all our problems, uh, we can send them to the cross of Christ. So I guess you guys should just move away from the cross. <laughs> It could get a bit messy. And there are various ways you can do it. I'm an African. I like to be very demonstrative. My problems, I go like this. You can be English and go. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have got some problems you want to get rid of today, this is an opportunity. All our problems, we throw them to the cross of Christ. We, we, we send them to the cross of Christ. We all say that together. Then I'm going to say all our difficulties, again, send them to the cross. All the devil's works, we send them to the cross of Christ. And all our clutter, we send to the cross of Christ. And then our hopes, we send, we sit on the risen Christ. Is that okay? Just think about it for a moment. What, are, what problems do you want to get rid of here today? What difficulties? What of the devil's works, maybe? And what of clutter? So. 
all our problems. We send them to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we send them to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send them to the cross of Christ. All our clutter, we send it to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. Woo woo! And just receive this blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon us and scatter the darkness from before our path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all who you love, this day and always. Amen. 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 Thank you. Please sit. I want the altar mic, please. Thank you for joining us. It's just been uh, it's been a joy to to spend time together with you and with those of you who've joined us online, um, sitting at home eating your popcorn and ice creams and <laughs> the I there's lots of waving. We have more people online today um, than we have at any other function we've had. So it's just really they're all waving back at you, folk. They're all waving. So it's, uh, it's just lovely to have a, a community online as well. And there are folk in the um, little chapel too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what did you put in that wine? <laughs> The, um, thank you. Uh, just a few announcements, and then I'm going to um, give uh, Nigel, our, the Chair of Trustees, a moment to say something. Um, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, folk, you are all invited if you're still here, and we'd be delighted if, you're, if you are. If 2 o'clock this afternoon, Dave, which is why he's been remaining behind the scenes, he's doing all the work this afternoon, Dave is going to be rededicating the... Um, the prayer rooms and dedicating the um, the wing flats, which have been completely refurbished and are on display today for the first time. So you'll have the opportunity of seeing the, rededic the, the, the prayer rooms being rededicated and all the work that's going on in there and the flats. So that's at two o'clock. Lunch, which um, is being um, served now. <laughs> the, they're, they're all waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's going to be served in the dining room. We, um, we, we stuck to plan B, and we're going to be in the dining room. There'll be two tables when you go into the dining room from here uh, to be able to just grab a plate. Somebody will send you in the right direction, fill it up with food, find a seat. There is seating outside. Folk, it is a bit windy, but there is seating outside in the quiet lounge, in the lounge, in the dining room. There, there are places to sit. Find a seat and take a seat. Um, Janet has been looking after a table in the um, entrance. Jan is that closed, or are you still o are you still open? The Janet's open for business. The the, the oh, books and mugs. Thank you very much indeed. So that's just in the the entrance at the end of this corridor. Janet is looking after books and mugs if you wanted to make any purchases. Um, and residential guests, of the, I know there are some residential guests, if you haven't signed up for supper this evening, <laughs> please find somebody to sign up for supper this evening. Just a little note, because you will get food if you sign up. Nigel, Nigel, would you want to say a word? And you want to stand here so yeah. that, and just turn slightly towards that governor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what a wonderful service. Um, uh, And the Lord is here all the time, and he delegates a lot of his work to people here to do it. And that needs coordination. And he's given us Steve, who is our chief coordinator. Thank you, Steve. Ably assisted by Veronica. I think that's where the brains are. 
But anyway, <laughs> so yes, perhaps we could just give Steve a round of applause for all his wonderful work throughout the world. This year, I would like to take the opportunity to thank a couple of other people. Uh, these are people who are here. The jobs they do are never advertised. The jobs they do cannot be applied for. There is no job description for them. But nevertheless, they are integral to the operation of this place. And I hope I won't embarrass you too much when I give you names, but they are the wives of our residential chaplains. Veronica. And when we go home and everybody goes home and the place is shut, there are four people who live on site. So Steve and Dave, Veronica and Colleen. It must be a slightly strange experience, but they are people of God. They are wonderful women of God. And they give uh, gifts and graces to us in this place. Thank you ever so much for what you do. You work behind the scenes, but you are vital to the operation. Thank you. It is truly a strange experience when you go home. We love it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> John's just sitting there shaking his head. Really? <laughs> the folk. Um, lunch is served in the dining room. Um, there are signposts everywhere for the little room that I suspect is in great demand. I won't say anything more. <laughs> But you will find that um, there are various little rooms around the establishment. Yes, my love. Where do you want to meet Dave? That's a very good question. Did I not say that earlier? No. The I need brains, Veronica. <laughs> where? <laughs> where do we all meet Dave at two o'clock? At the prayer rooms over the. Thank you. On the <laughs> on the other side of the car park, uh, the red roof building. Um, is for those of you who wanted to come and rededicate the prayer rooms with us and just see the work that's been done and the wing flats. But that doesn't mean that you can't go into the prayer rooms now if you wanted to, and, and even go into the flats now if you wanted to, to go and have a look around, please do, um, and enjoy what you see there. Thank you, you beautiful people, beautiful people in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can go now. <laughs> Thank you, team. Esther, Chrissy. Roland, Stephen, Pete, thank you, team. Yvonne, Rachel, Penny, thank you, team.